Hello everybody and welcome to part two of the Gianni Capaldi special podcast with myself and Robert. Obviously uh, Gianni we're talking about obviously your, your player who you grew up, it was Paul McStay. Um, I think Robert was why I talked to me as well about your favourite European trips. Uh, we've always, we've all followed sail abroad. Quite good sessions, let's be honest. Um, obviously you go to watch uh, the team play but the atmosphere and everything else um, I think Robert obviously says he, he met you. Um, obviously, I ain't drunk. I think he's seen you once. Um, so, what's your kind of standout kind of trip or any trip that you kind of like to tell people about and kind of why you enjoy going away and watching Celtic? Uh, I mean, I think one of the trips of my life was uh, was the Rome trip um, when when we played Lazio. I think that was. Uh, I mean, it was just historical. You know, the fact that we go away and we we beat a Serie A team in Italy is just amazing for, for Celtic and Scotland um, and just the atmosphere was I mean we're getting there as underdogs and we came out there triumphant um, and it was always a belief there's always a belief with, when you're a Celtic fan you can I will beat them and we'll do this and we'll do that and we come back with our tails between our legs and beat 5-0 or 6-0 or whatever it is but uh, I mean I, like we beat Barcelona at home and whatnot but being away and doing it was, been, was just top class and and uh, and Rome was such a great place to do it. You know, the Eternal City and the atmosphere there was just fantastic. You know, and we were treated well. Like, I mean, I've, I've been to Amsterdam a few times and, and uh, I remember, I think we, we won in Amsterdam and I remember we, when you're walking across the tunnel, when you're back years now, you play Dayax and the coins were getting flung at you and I remember there was a tunnel just getting in and it was, you knew you had to get from here to there. And you knew you were going to get hit by a coin at some point. But, uh, and then I remember Amsterdam the second time I was there when it was like riots in the square and whatnot. And, um, but I, I think that Rome was just, it was just like a holiday. It was brilliant. So it was a really good atmosphere. It was brilliant. And the fans were just top class. You know what I mean? Everybody was in a top mood. It was brilliant. Great times. So that's probably my favourite old trip. I think it's, I think following Celtic in Europe, in Europe, it's obviously you go and watch the games, but as you said, it is like a wee holiday, um, and you always meet people, like people, people meet you and go, oh, there's Gianni, I've met him and stuff like that. It's, you see people you don't really see back home, and I think, it's, I think that's why you're yourself of it. It's just good to go and experience a different type of atmosphere, because obviously back here it's, you're going to the game, you're getting your pie, your bovro, it's, it's different. When you go abroad, it's Celtic abroad, and, and you, you kind of get hooked on it, don't you? I mean, when you right. go here, I want to go back, I want to go back, and I think it's something that I ain't want to show. I've only been to a few, right? So I'm hooked on it now. I'm like, I want to go every game. If I can afford it, I'll go to one, I'll go to two. And I think it's brilliant just to experience oh, that atmosphere. No, I mean, I remember we were drinking on the bus to the stadium, or drinking before the bus, the stadium. They're serving you drinks outside the stadium, walking to the bus. They're serving you drinks inside the stadium. It was just, it was more of a party atmosphere. So it was just really good. It's good. That's my four year old. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I, Rome, I met you, Gianni, in Rome, um, in the Irish bar after the game. Uh, I was talking away to you and that, but you all, let's say, had a few shared bits in you. <laughs> um, it was great atmosphere. We had that throw and stuff. I stuff. Always say hi to you. And then I come up and spoke to you in Copenhagen. All right. And I, I, again. Um, I was with women that goes to uh, away tips with Carol and that. We're just talking to you for a couple of minutes again. Um, I I Copenhagen was alright. It was a good trip. Copenhagen was alright. Copenhagen was good. It was cold, but um, yeah. I think it was a really good trip. Yep. Um, really enjoyed it. I just love going away to see Celtic Europe. I just, right. it's like a a good way to get out with your mates and have a cup of beers and just and uh, as you say in Rome it was a lovely weather and stuff like that and um, just to socialise with mates what you don't get right. to do is you go to a game with your mates back here but it's like two or three days these trips so you get to spend more time with your mates and just away from family it's like a wee mini break um, and following Celtic and singing and enjoying yourself it's I think really if you Aye, if you're if you're up for it, if you're up for it, it's brilliant. It's the best. I mean, if you're kind of, I guess if you're a bit stuck up, and you don't want to be 
mixing or whatever, then it's not the place to be. But like, if you're really into, you know, if you're, if I think if you're down to earth and all that, you just love the atmosphere in Celtic, and it's the best place to be is on an away trip. So, now I'm with you on that, man. I can't even. That's the one thing that is, you know, the fear about the COVID, and I think that probably won't go another till there's a. I remember my mate called me and says, listen, do you want to go at the Milan game in December? And, and I'm thinking, well, I was, I was over here anyway, so I couldn't even I think, man, that's a bit dangerous as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're doing that. So I think until I'll probably get vaccinated and all that, I'll probably be staying away from them, to be honest with you. Because I wouldn't want to go if you couldn't do what you did. No. You, know yourself, you end up in the bars and, and it's like, <laughs> you know, 100 folk deep. You know what I mean? You wouldn't want to say, well, I can't get in there just in case. You'd want to be part of it, so it's probably best I don't go unless I'm vaccinated. Are you couldn't imagine scoring and going, ah, oh, we'll go. It's, it's hard to imagine, no oh. pints up there. And it's just, it's, it's, I, 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 as you say, I think until we're all vaccinated and we're all, everything's kind of settled in a bit until we go away again. It's, it's hard to kind of visualise going there and no having a party in a, in a, in a way, because that's where that's you go for in, in a way. It'd be, it's more torture. It'd be more torture for you not to be there. Mm-hmm. It, to be there, no being part of it, than to be somewhere else to say, oh, didn't you go? So I you know, definitely. So I can't wait for this vaccine to come out so we can all get back again. I think it's definitely one of the big things as well, because obviously we all have to what Celtic, we all have our holidays in general, and then I think that's one of the biggest things we're all missing. Is a wee, a wee sun break to Tenerife, a wee sun break here, and you can't do it. Um, but I think as Celtic fans, when I've seen the draw for Europa League, I've got brilliant Prague, Milan, can I go? I'm on. It's... Aye, no, I know, I know. In your heart, you're like, aye, aye. they might still go. We realise there was no chance we're going anywhere, but it's, it's a hope it kills us, isn't it? <laughs> Unless I go for a job, I'm not allowed to go anywhere. That's what the way you say. So, uh, I think when you've got kids, it's different because you don't want to bring them back to mm. them. You've got to be, you try to be responsible. So possible and you, you say no and like you know so if it's a job then fair enough but if it's if it's just for fun that you know you, you can't take the risk because then you just you'd never you'd, you'd feel guilty for the rest of your life if it never mm-hmm. happens so worth it I Gianni how getting getting to play in the charity games at Celtic Park um, just a wee insight on that how did that come about and what sort of feeling was it to Step out in Celtic Park with a Celtic circle when um, inside Celtic Park? Well, um, I just, I got asked to play, uh, the foundation asked me to play the one at Dunfermline. And, you know, you put the hoops on and it felt brilliant and it was great. And, um, you know, uh, I mean, it's an experience coming on for Petrov or Petrov coming on for you <laughs> or whatever, you know. What I mean? And uh, I remember a funny story. So when Mark, so Martin and I, when we were walking out in Dunfermline and that, we were, uh, we were trying to find the missus in the stand and uh, so we are trying to look up and that, we're waving and that, we found them waving and, and uh, Murdo was like, oh you two, like a couple of tourists, get up here. <laughs> so, um, so we got up and then, uh, you know, we're sitting and, you know, it's like, Murdo's so competitive he didn't want to be of his own so he's like you know and and I think I don't know like my I mean, the boy was there as well and and uh, we're just sitting there like you know look, keep looking at the murder give him a wee look every time like that so 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 and uh, so anyway I think we were it was now nil at half time and so we brought 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 us on at half time uh, just start the second half and um, and uh, so we Playing away and we, we started losing 2 0. So Murdo gets all competitive again. They're right, Gianni, off. Hey, Petro, <laughs> right, McAvoy, off, right, put, you know. And he's trying to get competitive again and it's just a charity game. And um, and I was like, Murdo, I can't believe you pulled me out. Like after it, I'm like, I can't believe you pulled me out. That's ridiculous. And he's like, Gianni, folk behind me are shouting, I can't believe I put you on. <laughs> so, so we always, he's always joking about that, but uh, no, and then, so that was brilliant, and then, but, you know, it wasn't at the hollow ground, you know what I mean, it wasn't mm-hmm. paradise, so you're, you're thinking, so the next one comes up, and, you know, you, you get the nod, and I'm like, I was just, 
I was so excited, you know what I mean? I was like a wee kid again. And, uh, you know, you're playing with, with Larson and the Ravchik and everybody's there, you know. It's just, it's uh, it was just an atmosphere like you can never imagine, you know. They, they said, they said, do you want to go stay at the hotel the night before? And I'm like, no, it's all right, I'll just stay home and then I'll come up in the morning. So, but a long story short, uh, it was fantastic. And, you know, you get in early, you have your breakfast there, you know, and you just get through the whole rig, man. You know, you're playing with Scott Brown and, um, you know, Chris was playing at the time as well. So it was just everybody, everybody you grew up with, mm -hmm. you know, you was there and you kind of, you know, you formed friendships and whatnot. It was, it was amazing. And then, you know, walking down and coming out and I took, a, I took my phone with me and when you come out, you look around you and it was, honestly, there's so many folk. And even if you know that someone you know is sitting over there, you can't you see, them. see them. No, <laughs> never, never see them. You never, never see them. You never see them. I'll be in here. Um, no, that's all right. And, uh, and I remember I took a wee video and I've got a wee video when I was, the game was just kicking off. And I just did something around, you know, the stadium. Um, and it's just, it's so frightening. Like, there's, you know, I, I, and it was, it was totally unfit for that game. T completely unfit for that game. But uh, it just, uh, you know, I don't know. It was, it was just amazing, like coming down that tunnel, and mm. you know, you, it was one of the best days ever. You know, like honestly, top five days ever. I think. I think it's the fact that, as you say, it's the guys you've grew up watching, cheering, paying money for, and you're like, I'm actually still next in the tunnel. I'm sharing. It's it's what dreams are made of, and I buy it. I don't know. You know, actually. It's still a professional Celtic, but you're playing with the guys who you've grown up supporting, watching, and then you're kind of moving the warm up. It's awesome. <laughs> For me, I'd, I'd be starstruck about, wow, that's brilliant. Oh, Just to, to, to have that experience is, let's be honest, it's very, very lucky because guys like us, that's something we dream of. So for, for that to happen, that's amazing. Just to live, live the tale, it's fantastic for me to kind of hear that because it's, it's stuff you wanted to be a party. Mate, I, you know, like, I'll be honest with you, like, I just, you you know, you have the birth of your kids and your your, your marriage days and all that stuff and, like, but, it, you know, it's right up there, you know, you, <laughs> you can't say it's better than having your kid or anything like that, you know, mm -hmm. so, but believe me, like, when you're, when you're in it, it's just, it's phenomenal and it's quite intimidating, like, when there's so many folk around you, like, it's it's intimidating, you know, it's, uh, you're always scared in case you 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 mess something up or something. Mm -hmm. up. You know it's all and it, it's all for fun and it's just mm -hmm. one big Celtic family anyway. You know what I mean? So, and I think that's what Celtic family is all about. It's we're all in this together kind of thing, you know. And I think that's what the message, with the foundation anyway, which is really important. You know, yeah. if people need to help and they're part of the Celtic family or not part of the Celtic family, the foundation is always there to to help. You know, there's been a couple of instances where folk have reached out to me and I put them in touch with the foundation and the foundation of, you know, done wonders for them and they, they're always ready to help. And there's so many folk I know that support the foundation because they know the great charity work it does. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, people forget that, yeah, it's easy to give up your day or time, but it's the fans that are putting the money in to buy the tickets to raise mm. the money for the charity. You know, so it's... It's a great team effort, absolutely great team effort. That's what and Celtic was founded on, Gianni. That's right. That's right. Um, that's right. What did you, when you were playing with Larson and that, now what we all go, phenomenal football player, or Chris, something phenomenal. How good was their touches and movement when you were playing just even in a charity game? Was it uh, like on a whole new level? Ah, uh, mate, there's, I mean, the touches and it's, you know, I remember Baldy went in for a tackle on Commons and Chris just stepped to the side. You know, he's like, ah, he's like I'm not going to get involved. <laughs> you know? But, uh, I, I mean, the touches are just phenomenal. I remember there was a bit when I was chasing a ball down with Lenny and uh, I can't remember who got it first, but we ran a lot to get to it and we got to it and turned around, ball got played away and then, so we're walking back up and Lenny just stops 
and he's right next to me and he throws up the river, there's a picture of him thrown up, but I got my hand in his back, got a right? yore. <laughs> and I said to him, I says, I says, thanks. I said, thank fuck it was you. I know me. So I says, at least you broke the ice, so I won't feel as bad if I have to. <laughs> but uh I no, it's really brilliant atmosphere and it's really good to be involved with the foundation. The foundation mm. honestly does really good things. I know there's Kano Foundations there too and they do amazing things too. But it's great that Celtic family actually care about each other and you know they're there to help. Especially in these times of depression. When yeah. people think that money wise, COVID, I mean, you know, if you've got a family and you you've got money, you know, the one thing I always worry about is support my family. So mm-hmm. I'm sure it it gets amplified. And uh, you know, I speak to a lot of folk and they're always, you know, I'm going through depression and this and that and you know, I've lost my job and that. But there isn't one person that's really over the moon now unless you're you know you're just solely focused on rangers so uh-huh. everybody's in the same boat mm-hmm. you know and everybody's we're all dealing with the same issues so it you know having the foundation and, and is good because you know a lot of people just need to talk to someone or and they can guide you who to talk to and you know yeah. depression right now is a, a nightmare amongst everyone and that's how we're really happy that football still still playing during, during this time because a lot is football's one of our kind of pinnacle things in our life. Um, Celtics, well, us three Celtics are a massive part of our lives and for us to just have the football, we're going to work and maybe you can't go and do a lot of stuff but knowing that the games come on Saturday, the games are Tuesday or Wednesday, you're thinking, right, I've got a game come up to, to watch and it keeps you, it's all, I think football's a massive thing and I think with Celtic do when it comes to charity work, the trust and stuff, it's brilliant. It's, I don't think it gets, sometimes it doesn't really get enough credit, I think, than it maybe should. Yeah, I mean, listen, everybody wanted football because they thought the UK would keep them sane and, you know, that's been the biggest argument. Uh, I don't, I don't know, I wonder if it was the right thing to do, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Um, but, you know, obviously, mental health is important to everybody and it gives somebody to watch. Um, so, something to look forward to, something to talk about. You know, what would we talk about, even if we're moaning, if we didn't have the football to talk about. I know. So, definitely gives us emotions. And obviously, you did the charity games. Um, you're now in America, um, as you've said. Is it hard to kind of stay up to watch the games? Do you need to always go to your bed a bit earlier and kind of I the time wise? I can't get to my bed earlier. I always never <laughs> really fall asleep before a certain time. But, uh, I mean, I'll get, I do get up for them. Honestly, I don't think I've, I've missed one. Um, but I definitely get up for them. You know, I prefer if they're later. Like I prefer the nighttime <laughs> games because then I can mm. get up in the morning. But um, I no time times all. I'm used to it. I'm just used to it. You know, all fun games are always four a.m. So the worst is getting up at four a.m. and not getting the result. But <laughs> definitely, uh, it's that's quite that's a long. Again, that shows you maybe how good a fan you really are, mate. Um, because. You're over there, time difference, and you're still going to your bed. You're getting up to watch it, and you make sure you're up. That's just that just shows you as well how much football means to yourself and the rest is that. That's what we look forward to. It's Celtic, Celtics are a big part of your lives, and it's uh, it's just as well as you're talking about it. So just I just think the same thing. <laughs> I've got a couple of mates out here that are Celtic fans. Um, um, a guy called Thomas Strain, uh, who used to run this, the Vegas found Celtic Sports Club, and then obviously Martin Comson. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, usually I'll be one of them watching the game at some point. Um, you know, Martin's just came back, so I don't know if, we, <laughs> if we'll make the efforts now, though, before the end. I'm sure we'll, we'll watch the whole fun games, but if it's that time, but um, I would, uh, you know, Tom or him will come over and we'll just watch the game together. So at least you're you know, going up yourself and setting yourself at 4 a.m. So. You've done some amazing stuff in acting, um, Gianni. You've done over 40 films and TV shows and stuff. Um, nice. You're now into producing as well. Is that correct? Uh, a, a little bit, a little bit. Tend, yeah. uh, I used to be a bit more in the producing, but um, how can I say it? it? Just I get pretty busy, so I kind of laid off it a bit. But yeah. um, I... Uh, luckily, you know, I keep working, so it's good. I can't complain. 
you know, as I said. And you got a Scottish BAFTA as well. Uh, well, I was part of something that won the BAFTA at the time. Yeah. I was nominated for the BAFTA, yeah. to be honest with you. So, What's your best acting role? What, what do you feel your best acting role has been? Yeah, I really enjoyed a movie called River Runs Red. It's a movie mm-hmm. I did with uh, John Cusack and Hemsworth and whatnot, a few others, um, where I played this uh, Southern American, well, from the South, like, uh, I played a racist cop. Um, mm-hmm. So I played, like, the bad guy kind of thing and deal. I shot a, a black kid which was really relevant for Black Lives Matter kind of thing when it came up um, but that was interesting it was a really good I really enjoyed it I felt that was a, a good bit of work because the director turned out I've worked with the director twice now and we're actually about to start again in, in April March April um, but uh, I did end up doing a movie he, so his name is Wes Miller and, he, and he's a, a black American and he you know he's we became good pals now, we've worked twice and, and about to work again. And, uh, you know, he would have to educate me, like, mm. you know, I'd be like, no, surely not. And be like, no, no, I definitely. And, you know, like, this is how I, because we think racist, racists are, you know, they, they don't wear shirts that say, you know, I'm racist and, or I hate black people or whatever it is. They're, they're more subtle and it's more uh, undertoned, especially if you're a cop, you can't just, Come mm-hmm. out with it, so it was very, you know, he, he would he would tell me his experiences and or people that he knows their experiences, and I had to talk to a couple of folk as well just to see, you know, how they how, experience that they've dealt with. So it's a kind of thing that you could really delve into, and it was really a, it was a really good shoot. I enjoyed it. Shot it in Kentucky, but uh, I River Runs Red was a good movie. Really enjoyed it. Because obviously, when you've done uh, people moving away in Scotland for the film Robert the Bruce. Um, the Blood of Redemption, and obviously we're in a Santa movie. After oh, I looked at uh, Adventures of Santa, um, how was that? Want a Christmas movie? Because it's something bit different in it than a, in a Christmas movie. I well, I get asked to do it, uh, and the reason I did it a couple of things. One was because it was three universal, and secondly, because it was something that I felt my kids could watch. Because <laughs> you know, most most movies I'm killing folk in them, so I didn't. Uh, <laughs> it's more action stuff, and you know, and I just you know, it's funny because. My wee one, well, Trinity now, the, the big one, I should say, even though she's just four, uh, she would always, when she gets something on her mind, she watches it like 10, 20 times. Mm-hmm. So it got to a point where, well, oh, oh, we've just seen that, Trinity, let's put something else on. Oh, no, I want to watch it. So you're stuck with it. And she'd say things like, where's mummy? You know, like, who's that woman? You know, like, things like that. <laughs> oh, that's Denise Rick. That's no, your mum. <laughs> you know? uh, it, was, it was good. And then I just did a movie called The Commando. And that was the one shot in Albuquerque. I just shot it in October or November. And um, uh, I mean, I think for me, that's, I get told that that's one of my best performances by the director. I remember first time I worked with that director. But uh, and that was with Mickey Rourke. And um, but, uh, I get to play, I got to play Scottish in that. I just got to play An Absolute Psychopath, which was fantastic. Um, but I'm looking forward to that coming out next year. But uh, I everything's different, you know. You, you go from from some comedy to a, an action to a thriller to, you know, a horror movie, whatever. You just, you just got to kind of, uh, you know, go with the flow. You're, you've worked with some really big actors and stuff like Morgan Freeman and that. Who's, who were you starstruck um, walking alongside and if you became good pals with any and turned them into any Celtic supporters? Uh, I mean, I, I gave John Cusack a, a Celtic scarf as well, um, but... He was a bit, he was a bit of a dick. <laughs> Got to be honest with you. <laughs> not to me, not to me, but he was a bit of a dick to some other folk. And mm-hmm. um, I wasn't, I didn't even ask him for a picture of it because it, it, sometimes it feels a bit awkward. Sometimes you know what I mean. Whereas yeah. um, other folk that like they get history and they appreciate about the history, and mm-hmm. I always try and plug the foundation when I'm when I can. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, Ron Perlman. He was, we just did a Western a wee while ago called Hell on the Border um, with Frank Grillo. I gave him a Celtic, you know, scarf. He was happy with, you know, Danny Glover was happy with his. And, you know, a lot of them actually really appreciate. Even um, the UFC guy who was in, Donald Cerrone, cowboy, who was in the Mickey Rourke movie. He, uh, they appreciate kind of thing, the whole Scottish mm. connection thing. So, you know, they like it. And 
cowboy hung up on the bar. So in his house, so, you know. Yeah, somebody, somebody's let the cat in. <laughs> <laughs> I can open the door, sorry. let the missus in. Just it's, just obviously, it's obviously as well you've uh, oh Robert Abuse uh, Robert Abuse sorry what great Angus McFadden as well guys like that that's just Robert England they're guys that's obviously big actors as well so that's just kind of shows you kind of company that you've been or your talents go to you to get into what were they guys? Well it's funny Robert Abuse I've got a really small part and I only come in mm. at the end and uh, I come in with Daniel Portman at the end but I'll tell you I was supposed to I was supposed to do something else in Robert the Bruce. And um, we ended up, dates get pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And then there was a conflict and I couldn't do it anymore. And mm -hmm. they shot somewhere in like Montana. And then um, they had to go to Scotland for like four days of filming or something, five days of filming. So um, I was flying over and the, the director had said, listen, we're, we're shooting in Scotland. Um, I know it's not what you're supposed to have done, but would you just come and do a couple of days on the film? I says, I no worries. You know, so, and... and I'm good. I've known Angus for quite some while, so we just mm -hmm. never worked together. So, um, you know, it was good to work with Angus for a couple of days and, you know, I was home and it's fine, you know. So it was, it was all right. But Robert, Robert England was all right. It was a funny story about Robert England. Um, so he obviously played Freddy Krueger. So I'm out in Bulgaria and, uh, and uh, you know, there's a movie called Night World. And I think it's always on that horror mm -hmm. channel in the UK. Aye, um, aye, aye. So, you know, so I'm out there and so the only three actors that were brought in for America was Robert England, myself and a guy called Jason London. So we get in the hotel, the first night you're at the bar and you're just like, you know, and Robert England's like, so did I tell you the story about when I was in, the, in my house at a party? And I'm like, no, no, that's interesting. So uh, I thought, well, I'm gonna, you know, you have me stand at a bar somewhere in Bulgaria having a drink with Freddy Krueger. He's telling you this great story. You know? So that's brilliant. So, ha ha, very funny, great. Next day you go to work. Back, back at the tail, next evening, and we're there, and he goes, Johnny, did I tell you the time for the story? You're not being, you want to be polite, but you don't want to be rude. Is that, all right. Same story. Yeah, same story, <laughs> right? Night three, you're like, same, same story, right? Night three, you're like, same, I've heard it, yep, yep, that's when this happened, yep, yep. By night four and night five, you're coming in the front, front door of the hotel, you're, you're doing a Mission Impossible thing, so the, if he's standing at the bar at the lobby, he doesn't see you, so he doesn't wave you over. <laughs> and you're just trying to sneak off to your room, or you're coming down to your room and you're trying to run out the front door without him waving you back over. Like, you know, so uh, you, just, you just repeat the same stories over and over again. Um, you done still game, Gianni? How was that? Ah, it was... It was a, uh, it was good. It was a, it was a laugh. It was, you know, I knew Greg Hempel and, um, you know, obviously it was the last season and Greg's like, ah, look, um, if you know, if you want to come and do something, this we've got this day, you know, we're, we're writing this scene. Um, Martin's going to do it as well. If, you know, it's a tele selling telephones. If you can make that, it'd be brilliant. You know, so that uh, you know, it was a not for. It's weird because. For, for a grown up, it's still game, chewing the fat. It was like an honour to, yeah, you know, it's forever grateful. Um, it's one of those ones where you're forever, it's difficult to explain because somebody in America will be like, oh, what, okay, you know, but you're like, no, still game's a huge thing back home for us. Mm -hmm. So it was great to, you know, to have a, to work with those two, you know, Ford mm -hmm. and Greg. And they're, they're so funny, man. They're, they're basically right in the scene when you're in, you're outside and you're in the wee van. Mm -hmm. So it's Martin, myself, and, and Greg and Ford, and, and they're writing for the director, going, right, what if he say this, and what was it that? And that's kind of funny, you know, and that's all their game. Their, their humour, their comedy is just, like, you know, exceptional. And then Greg touches, just turns to gold, man. He's just so funny. So, um, so I, it was a good experience to have. You know, obviously as well, Gianni, uh, obviously the, the pandemic and stuff, um, which are... Uh, Kind of plans for the, uh, the future? Um, is, is it kind of put and hold anything that was maybe going to happen? Um, just is it any more got any more films in the making? Any producing maybe lined up again? Which are kind of plans for the future? I um, well, I just got. Uh, so as I said, I, I did a movie with Michael Madsen in um, at the end of the year. There, I think in October, September, they flew down to um, Mexico. Uh, and then I did the movie called The Commander with Mickey Rourke in 
in um, Albuquerque, and then I got flown out to do a movie with Cuba Gooding Jr. in um, Minnesota called Way of the Warrior. I was there for two days, and uh, Minnesota shut the state down. So um, they asked if I wanted to stay there, but it was Thanksgiving on the Thursday. And so I came back and then uh, to pick back up after, but they ended up with 30 positives when I was there. So that was quite a scare because I was, I mean, I was there and if I mm. stayed and didn't go for Thanksgiving, I would have caught it. But uh, I know I'm doing a, actually doing a movie with uh, Bruce Willis and it was supposed, right. to shoot, supposed to shoot in January and then it got moved to February, all because of COVID, you know, because there's real scares. Mm-hmm. But um Actually, I get word today that it, well, it has to happen by the end of March to the end of April. So I'll probably come home prior. I'm trying to come home prior, but uh, I do start. Uh, I do start a job. It's funny. I don't want to to say too much, but I had two Zoom meetings with John Gotti Junior. This week. Oh wow! Uh, about, uh, I. I mean, you know, it's it's crazy because he's talking about you know when he ran the Gambino family in the nineties. You know, and it's like, I'm sitting there going, yes, Mr. Gambino, yes, Mr. <laughs> you know, yes, Mr. But, uh, I miss Mr. Gotti, I'm like, you know, and he's like, yes, what do you think of this, Jim? What do you think of this, Jim? And I'm like, oh, this is, you know, I, I, brilliant, fantastic, fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, I'll see if that, if I end up doing that, it's it's this month, it's at the end mm-hmm. of January, and it's short in Florida, but uh, there's a couple other things that, that I'm on a TV show out here called Paper Empire, and mm-hmm. I'm still trying to finish the first season, but because of COVID last year, it, it shut down. So um, I know they're just, everybody's waiting here, and it's just, you keep setting a date, because it doesn't get better, they push it another month. And then they push Put it back. Month, and so, I, I mean, I was supposed to come home for Christmas. You know, we had a ticket booked on the 1st of December, and I, and I was asked, no, please don't leave, because we're mm-hmm. going to shoot in December. Please don't leave. 8th of December, 20th of December. Boom, and it's just non-stop. They keep pushing all the time, pushing all the time. So, um, so that's why we're still here. Do you ever get starstruck with any like actors and stuff you see? Uh, no, really. It's a weird no. thing now. I think at first I did, but uh, yeah. I think I did a movie called The Cross, like in 2011 or 2010, and I was working with Michael Clark Duncan and Vinnie Jones and Danny Trail at the time, and that. And I remember. Vinny walked in and he's like, I, I, him and I were only Brits on it. And, he, and he's like, I don't want to talk to anybody here. You know, cause he was playing the bad guy. And he's like, because he's like, he didn't want to be familiar. And then, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. some folks stay in character. And then him and I just started talking about football. And then that was it. And then we became pals after that. You know, and I think we ended up working like you know, six, seven times together, you know, although, you know, from Italy to wherever we worked together. But uh, I remember I, I met Megan Fox on that film set because Brian Austin Green was leading that movie mm-hmm. and she came to set one day. And he's like, hey, Johnny, this is, uh, you know, Megan. I think that, that time I did, <laughs> that time, you know, that was like one of my first movies out here. And uh, I did, but um, I, it's crazy, man. You just, you end up kind of like, you lose that thing, you know? And I think yeah. it affects you if you're working, if you're working with someone and you have that, you've just got to kind of see past it and just mm-hmm. think of them as you know, whatever character they are, you know what I mean? So, because yeah. you don't want to go in with that perception and, you know, if I don't yeah. give you respect in real life, then I don't want to, like if the character doesn't give the other character respect, you don't want to just do it just because there's somebody you recognise, if you know what I mean? So, yeah. I say, Gianni, it's, it's been brilliant to hear your story, mate. Um, it's, there's some stuff I didn't, didn't even know about you, mate, which is brilliant to hear about. Um, obviously, speaking about Celtic, um, I think overall, I think the, the views, I mean, Robert's kind of the views of yourself um, and the fans, and we hope in the next few weeks it does get better, uh, i.e. the new manager and whatever else, and obviously for yourself, uh, Jan, I hope obviously the film, the next film you do with Bruce Willis, that'll be brilliant, um, hopefully, right. hopefully when it, when it comes out, we'll get a wee, a wee watch, um, I, I really appreciate yeah. your time, Jan, um, because obviously it's a pandemic, I know how tight that is for time with the family and stuff, and I think me and all really appreciate you coming on the podcast, and obviously for the viewers, it'll be a good wee listen, taking a know your story, and 
how big you are about Celtic. So I really appreciate it, Johnny, and I really appreciate you coming on, mate. Thank you. Well, thanks for having us, and uh, everybody stay safe out there, and, and uh, you know, keep the chin up. It's, a, it's been a bad season, and you know, but I'm, I genuinely believe, and here's the thing, the automatic, this is my fallback, the automatic Champions League place uh, doesn't happen next season, it's the season after. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I know if we can get someone in quickly, get things turned around, then I'm sure by next season we're, 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 we're off to the races. We'll, we'll secure it next year. So. Well, Gianni, thanks very much for coming on. Thanks a lot, Gianni. That's us this week on the Celtic Now and for our podcast with a special guest, Gianni Capaldi. Robert, thanks for your time, mate. Thanks for joining thanks, in. Man. And Gianni, Cheers. I'll see you again, mate. Take care, keep safe, and hail, hail. Yeah. See you Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.